In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Python on a Windows computer, on a Mac, as well as on Linux. But before we even get there, I wanna show you how you can run Python for free just by going to the python.org website or using Jupyter Notebooks, which are a fantastic way to learn Python. Now, before we continue, if you enjoy these types of Python videos, if you enjoy learning about technology, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like the video and click on the bell to get notifications. I'm covering a whole bunch of technical content on my website. I wanna teach you as much as possible on my YouTube channel. Okay, with that being said, let me show you how you can install Python on Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as show you how to run Python in the cloud. I've put timestamps below that you can use if you wanna jump directly to, for instance, the Windows installation or the Mac OS installation or the Linux installation. But notice here, if I go to python.org, directly on the website, I can launch an interactive shell. No software is required. I'm simply running this directly within my web browser. Now in this example, I'm using Brave, it's blocking some stuff, so let me run that again. Okay, so there you go, I've got Python, and I can type something like print hello world, the typical first script that most people will run. So there you go, I'm running Python directly within my browser. I could also create a loop, so for i in range. 10. Now, if you're not sure about what loops are, don't worry. I'll cover this in other videos on my channel, but basically I'm saying for something in the range zero to nine, let's print I. And what I probably need to do here is use four spaces because I need to put my spaces in. Python is very particular about spacing. And notice there I was able to print numbers in the range zero to to nine. If you want a basic Python interpreter, here you go directly within your browser. But a more powerful way to do this is to use Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are fantastic. They give you an IDE. They also allow you to run code. Very useful if you're learning Python. So if you go to try on the jupyter.org website, notice the spelling. And what I'm gonna do is run a Jupyter Lab. And if you go to file, new, and let's create a notebook and click select because we want to use Python here. What I could do here is just type print hello world. This is a lot more powerful than the code directly on the python.org website. Notice there is my IDE. It's helping me learn things. So notice the coloring. So if I type print like that, it's showing me the colors with the brackets and so forth. And notice there I've set A equal to one, a variable equal to one, and I'm printing what A is. It's equal to one there. If I set it to two as an example and run my code, notice it prints two. I can also copy code. So rather than manually typing this out, I could copy and paste my code. So now when I run that cell, as it's called, notice there's the range zero to nine. If I click in here again and click play, it's going to increment the number now. Notice it's six. It's remembered what I did previously and that's why the numbers are higher. If I use some other code. This is what's called a while loop. So I'm gonna set A equal to one. While it's true, I'm gonna print hello world. If A equals three, I'm gonna break my loop and then I'm going to set A equal to itself plus one. So if I run that, notice it's printed hello world three times. If I change this to let's say five and run it again, notice it prints hello world five times. If I set it to something else, let's say 10, notice it'll print hello world 10 times. The great thing here is I can jump from one script to another and make changes and then run those scripts. So I've got a whole notebook of different cells and I can do various things here. So let's say set A equal to 20, notice hello world, A equals to 20. Fantastic options available directly within your browser. So you could go to python.org or you can go to jupyter.org and then create notebooks. You can save those notebooks. So as an example, I could save the notebook. I could also download my notebook. So keep this for later. So I could save it as Python one and I've saved it to my local computer. So this is fantastic. But now that I've shown you how to use Python online, let me show you how to install Python if you wanna run it locally on your Windows computer or your Mac or on Linux. In this example, I've got Windows 11. WinVer allows me to see the version of Windows 11 that I'm using. In this case, it's 21H2, that's the OS build. Process is similar, however, no matter which version of Windows that you use. If I open up a command prompt, so use CMD, and I try and type Python, notice we take into the App Store. So you can install Python directly from the App Store if you want to. I personally wouldn't do that. Same 
with Python 3 takes us to the App Store. I've found that I've had issues using the App Store. I find it better to go directly to python.org and download Python directly from the Python website. Python.org, go to Downloads. It picks up that I'm using Windows. So I'm simply gonna download the latest version of Python at the time of this recording. Your version may be different, that's fine. Just download the latest version of Python as per the Python website. If you wanna download other versions, you can click view the full list of downloads, and then you can specify a Python version that you wanna download for Windows or Mac or Linux as an example. But I'm just gonna go for the latest release that's now been downloaded. In my downloads directory, I'm gonna double click on Python 3.10.7. 64 bit. Make sure that you specify this option, add Python 3.10 to path. That means that you can run Python from anywhere on your computer. Make sure that you do that if you wanna run Python from other directories. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna click install now. I'm gonna say yes to allow Python to make changes to my computer. Python is now installed. It's a very simple installation. We told that setup was successful. I'm gonna disable the path length limit. I'm gonna specify that and click yes and click close. Okay, so if I search for Python, notice I have Python running as an app. Version is 3.10.7, and I can type print hello world as an example. And there you go. And I can quit out of Python. I'll run a CMD prompt or command prompt, and I'll type Python, and notice the version that's run is 3.10.7. I'll quit out of that. If I use Python 3, it's gonna try and take me to the App Store. In the old days, we used to run Python 2.7 and Python 3 on the same device. These days, I recommend that you just run Python 3, and that's installed by default. So if I type Python dash version, you can see that's the version installed, and you can see that once again when I run it directly from the command prompt. And I can do the typical hello world script and quit out of that. In other videos, I'll show you how to create scripts using Python. In this video, I just wanted to show you how to get Python installed. In this example, I'm using an AMD computer, so an AMD laptop using Windows 11. In this example, I've got a M2 MacBook Air. The same process applies for an M1 or Intel MacBook. If I open up a terminal, and you can find that by clicking on Spotlight and searching for terminal, Python doesn't work. Python is not installed by default. If I use the command Python 3, I'm asked to install the developer tools. Now I'm not gonna do it that way. The way I'm gonna do it is go to the python.org website, go to downloads, and then download the latest release of Python at the time of this recording. Now in your case, there may be a later release than what I'm seeing here. Just download the latest release of Python. That's now downloaded. So I'll open up the package file. The Python install is displayed. It's a simple installation. I'm gonna click continue multiple times. You need to agree to the license agreement. It's gonna take 154 meg of space. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click install. You need to put in your administrator password and then I'm gonna click install software. And there you go, Python is installed. It's actually opened up a window showing me that it's installed under the applications. So I'll click close to close the installer and then I'll move the installer to the bin. So if I open up Spotlight and search for idle, that opens the idle IDE, which is a very basic Python integrated developer environment. And if I type print hello world and press enter, that runs. And I can type quit to quit out of Python. On my terminal, if I type Python 3, Notice Python 3 is running. We can see the version of Python and I could do it here as well. I could write some code such as hello world and that runs and then I could quit out of Python. Okay, so that's how you get Python installed and running on a Mac. Multiple ways of doing this, but this is a simple way to do it by installing Python from the python.org.website, I get the latest release of Python and I can run Python scripts directly on my Mac. I'll show you in a separate video how to create scripts and then run them. In this video, I simply wanted to show you how to get Python installed and running on a Mac. Now I'll show you how to install Python on Ubuntu as well as Kali Linux. The installation is actually very simple. Now Python is installed by default both on the latest release of Ubuntu 2204 as well as Kali Linux, but you may want to update the version that you're using. So the command lsb release a shows me that I'm using Ubuntu 22.04.1 LTS in this example. And on Kali, I'm using 2022 
1.0.3. In both these cases, Python is installed already, but I'm gonna show you how to install it in case you wanna upgrade the version of Python or you wanna install additional software such as pip. There's a whole bunch of additional software that you can install at the same time, or you simply may wanna just install Python and get an updated release of Python. I'm going to open up a terminal. So I could click here or search for terminal, open up a terminal, I'll zoom in a bit. And if I type Python 3, notice Python 3 is running already. I didn't have to install it. And if I type print hello world, that works. I can also quit out of there and use the command Python dash dash version. And I should say Python 3 dash dash version. And you can see the version of Python that I'm running. So notice in this version of Ubuntu, if I type Python, that doesn't work, but Python 3 works. If you did want to install Python, so let's say you've got a computer where Python is not installed or an older version of Ubuntu, you could use the command sudo apt install Python 3 and you may also want to install Python 3 pip. You could just install Python 3 and then install other packages later. There are many packages that you can install. First thing I'll do before I run the software is a sudo apt update to update my references. And then I'll type the command sudo apt install python3 python3 pip. Say yes to install the software. Software is now installed. I'll clear the screen. And now if I type the command python3 dash dash version, notice the version has changed. It's now 3.10.6. So again, command to install python or to upgrade python is sudo apt install python3 and then you can optionally say Python 3 pip. You will have to put in your pseudo password if you haven't done that already. In this example, Python is up to date. That's an example of how you install Python on Ubuntu. Here's Kali Linux. Let's install Python on Kali. So in a terminal, I'll type Python and see if Python works. That doesn't work. Python 3, however, works. Shows me that I'm using Python 3.9.8. I could quit out of there. I could also use the command Python 3 dash dash version, and that shows me the version of Python that I'm running. I'll do a sudo apt update to update my references, put in my sudo password. Okay, now that I've done that, I'll use the command sudo apt install Python 3, Python 3 pip. That's only necessary if you want to install Python and you also want to install pip. Python, as you've seen, is already installed on Kali, so I didn't actually need to do anything. Software is now installed, and there you go, it's installed. I'll clear the screen, and now if I type Python 3 dash dash version, you can see we're on Python 3.10.7, which is the latest release of Python. So I've successfully updated the Python release on Kali to the latest version of Python, and I could write some Python code here, and there you go. Python is now running on Kali Linux. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.